Hello, hello, hello. It is Kendall Anise, the Remix Coach, and welcome to More Than Just a Movie, where we break down classic Black films, right? Classic Black films, Black television, and the Black experience when it comes to what we're consuming, what we're watching. And when it's more than just a movie, it's more than what you see on the screen. It's more than who you see on the screen. There's always people in the back. There's always a deeper connection and a deeper story. That's why it's more than just a movie. As Leroy and I talked about, this is season six. And as we talked about, and Leroy was like, we should do black directors because that's how we're seeing the shows by the person behind the camera calling the shots. Leroy season six. All right. We, this is like the third, the third one into season six, as we are going to focus on the incomparable Robert Townsend. Hey, Leroy. What's up? What's up, lady? What's <laughs> season, what six. season six. Season Leroy, six. And, and you know what? And, I, and, and I was just thinking about, about the title that we gave this more than just a movie. Mm -hmm. and, and it is so, it is so appropriate for, mm -hmm. for, you know, and I'm glad that's what mm -hmm. we do where we, we are always in line with, mm -hmm. with the title of the, you know, of, of the show and how we try to keep yeah. it more than just, we keep it more than just a movie, you know, cause like you were saying, it is yeah. the movies, movies are more than just the actors that you see. There's so much yeah. more that people don't even recognize, realize, especially like yeah. when we talked about the um, who was the the costume designer, the very de famous custom des cos costume designer, the one that does the designing of yeah. the clothes. Oh, for the um, Ruth Carter. Remember we did have yeah. Ruth Carter. That's what I'm saying. Ruth nobody Carter nobody like talks Ruth about Carter. a Ruth Carter. Yeah, nobody talks about a Ruth Carter. You know, mm -hmm. within the industry, I'm sure mm -hmm. she's very well known and everything like that, yeah. but. If you were to say Ruth Carter to the average moviegoer, it'd be like, who that? You know right. what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm glad that we that we decided in season six to go behind the camera. Yeah. You know, versus being um, in front of the camera with all of who who yeah. we talk about and everything like that, because they, they, it is important to me. It is important. I think it's important to you too. It is yeah. important that we do recognize those those individuals that do a great job behind the camera that make everything look good in front of the camera. You know, so so yeah, yeah. So season six. That's what it's all yeah. about. It's important. Yep, because it is. It just like when it has a part when you have a person. And you see the person out front, you think the person then done everything themselves. And it took a whole army mm -hmm. of people to get them yep. together how they wanted, to, you know, how they wanted to present themselves. And the same right. thing with a movie, you know, right now we're doing everything ourselves and people see us on this small screen. But if we were to be on the larger screen, we would have people dressing us, people doing our hair, you know, women makeup, even men, you know, making sure there's no gloss, making sure your clothes are right, you know. And there's a lot of people behind the scenes that we don't see. And of course, as we speak about Mr. Robert Townsend, um, he was in front of the camera, but behind the camera in so many movies that you may not even know he was there. And it's so yeah. funny how divine God is because I'm watching this show called The Bear and it's so good. And my daughter said she told me about it before and I don't remember when she said bear and then someone else was telling me about what it was. So I said, let me watch it. And I'm watching mm -hmm. it last night. And my daughter was like, I'm not going to tell you who plays her father. I'm not going to tell you who plays the main girl's father. And sure enough, it was Robert Townsend. Townsend. I was like, mm -hmm. Robert And I said, and then I didn't think anything of it. And then when I woke up this morning, I was like, that's crazy. Because we said we were doing Robert Townsend. Townsend. <laughs> Doesn't that happen to yeah, us all and the and time? This just... Yeah, yeah, you always say it. And that just, that just goes to show you to me or it shows me, you know, just how in, um, in a line with what we do, 
you know, yeah. and and how things line up like that. Because I, ne- I, 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 this is the first. I think I was looking at like Robert Townsend's movies that he's either been in or directed or, or whatever. And I think I saw the bear. I saw it on the list. I've never seen it. I've never it's seen so the bear. Good. It's so really? it's going yeah. into it's it's going into its third season. So I'm on season two now. I'm I'm late to really? the party. Really? Okay. I'm late to the party, okay. but it's on Hulu. Really? Okay. 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 See, it's it's some Binge hidden. Watch it. it's, it's good. It's yeah, good. It's some so I'm hidden. Getting, I'm getting through that now. And and there's so many hidden movies on like Hulu, Netflix. Stuff that we've yeah. never, I've never heard of. Yeah. And people be like, well, yeah, you yeah. got to watch this. You got to watch that. That just goes to show you, yeah. you know, that not everything is about being on the big screen and getting these, yeah. these huge, huge box office numbers and everything to be yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's great. I'm going to have to check it out. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's good. You got to check it out. It's good. So let's talk about Mr. Robert Townsend. Um, he is an American actor director and comedian as well as a writer um man he is best known as this says for directing films but they're not talking about that he wrote them in all that hollywood shuffle in 1987 Mm -hmm. which was amazingly brilliant when it comes to that (laughs) writing in the direct in the direction of that uh it's a classic eddie murphy raw he directed that a lot of people don't know in 1987 the Meteor Man, remember that in nineteen, yeah, yeah, nineteen ninety three, and in nineteen ninety one, Good Gracious Almighty, the Five Heartbeats, written, produced, directed by Robert D. Townsend. That is a classic. And he only starred in it. One movie that he directed and wrote, right? And he starred That's in it. it exactly. If he only had one movie that he wrote, starred in, directed, produced, and all, and it only said the five heartbeats, he would have won the game. It, 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 see, all right, let me, let me ask you this, and I might be, I might be rubbing you the wrong way. With, yes, with The this Bear, question. Melissa, it is. It's a great, Melissa said The Bear is a great show. It really is. Okay. It's good. Let, let me let me let me ask you. This. And my daughter was like, "Mom, I didn't think you were would like that." And I'm I love it. I love it so far. Some people. Mm-hmm. It there must be a delay or something because I don't know. There must be a delay or something. Um, but I, I want to ask you this because Robert Townsend is is one of those mm-hmm. that has written, directed, produced, and starred in a movie, and and I see mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm being Tyler Perry before Tyler Perry. Is that a, oh, is that a good com- comparison to that? Yeah, and, and it's, it's a good comparison, but they're totally different, as we know. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, definitely totally different. But I'm just talking about in the aspect of writing, producing, directing, you know, and Robert Townsend has, has done um, TV shows. He was in, the, he had the show um, Fatherhood. That people slept on. Parenthood. 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 I'm sorry. Parenthood. Yeah. Parenthood. Parenthood yeah. was great. And we're going to talk sitcom, The Parenthood, main, his main character, Robert Peterson, which my daughter loves. She was like, Robert Townsend was cute back then. <laughs> the series he created and directed Uh-oh. and selected uh, episodes ran from <laughs> ran from 1995 to 1999. Townsend, Townsend is also known for his role, of course, as Duck Matthews in 1991's Five Heartbeat. But Townsend is also known, they keep saying also known, also known for his production company, Townsend Entertainment, which has produced films like Playing for Love. That was a good movie. That was an independent one, like the B, I don't know if it was a BET really? movie, but it was kind of like that. It was that one was good uh-huh. playing for love. I forgot about that in the hive and during the 1980s and 90s. Uh, Townsend gained national exposure through his stand up comedy routines and appearances on The Tonight Show. See, these young people don't know about The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, right? Um, Townsend has worked his- with 
and he and he directed Leroy's favorite movie, the uh, uh, Baps. <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Now, now, do you remember? And I didn't see this. I know. Yeah, we know you love. You know you love. You love Baps. <laughs> we did Baps on here. Like, I got to tell the Bap story. I got to tell the Bap story for those that are just tuning in for the first time. So we reviewed Baps maybe in season one or two, and Troy Byer, who wrote Baps, was in our comments. And she loved that we were doing that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And Robert Townsend directed that. But go ahead, continue. No, but do you remember? And I don't think it was, I don't know if it was before Hollywood Shuffle or maybe a little after Hollywood Shuffle. But Robert Townsend, to me, was the first one to put on like that, that um, like the deaf comedy jam. Show. Yeah, he had yeah, a variety that, that, um, show. Yeah, and he had different comedians. I like because I yeah, don't see that anywhere. Because he ever he put on a lot of comedians that yeah. what that got their start back in the day. And, yeah, and I'd like to did. see. I I might have to look that up to see which comedians he had come through there. Because there was a lot that he yeah, had he that he had, had on on there. Yeah, I remember Snoop yeah. Dogg was on on there performing one time. Him and no, really? Ice okay. Cube and Yo Yo, Ice Cube and Yo Yo okay. were sing, were doing yeah. like he would have musical guests and all of that. It was because that was that was good. back. It was that was in the eighties, right? I remember that? That was in the eight. Wasn't it? That was the eighties, right? Mm -hmm. That was the eighties when he 90s. did that. I don't think it was the nineties. I think it was it the eighties. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking it was that yeah. early in the mid eighties was when I'm gonna have yeah. to look it up. Yeah, but but yeah, but yeah. he to me he was kind of the the kickstarter. Of Def Comedy Jam, what was the other one? Because there were other ones that were out there. Um, uh, um, what's the one that that uh, didn't BET have one or didn't BET have, have a, like a, a comedy? Yeah, comic view. um, comic view. yeah, Comic View. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, Comic mm -hmm. View. You know, so Robert Townsend was doing all of that stuff before yeah, these was. before these other shows came on and. To me, and I don't know if you how you feel about this, he doesn't get the credit or the accolades that he should get I agree. for being and doing what he he's meant to the industry. He means he's meant a lot to the industry. Yeah, and and him and Keenan, him and him and Keenan Ivory Wayne's are, are two peas in the pod, you know, because mm -hmm. of everything that they've done that they've done mm -hmm. together. And but yeah. I don't think Keenan gets the credit either for, for everything that he's done in the industry and and the innovativeness that they had and the creativeness that they had for what they for what they did for black cinema you know what i mean i really do so i'm glad we yeah. i'm glad we were doing him today because i really want to give him his you know his due because he's that talented brother and and put yeah. a lot of people on and yeah. was in front of the camera behind the camera yeah. all of those great things you know yeah and it's so funny, um, and I totally agree with you, and I think he should get his flowers because sometimes when people pass, they like, oh, well, let me tell you about, you know, Robert Townsend was yeah. so this, and everybody's posting these things, but it's like celebrate him while he can still, you know, smell the right. flowers. But I mm -hmm. remember it mm -hmm. was, I was watching, I was think I was on his page, and he had, I'm looking at this, he was in Cooley High. Um, it sounds he was um he had a small, small role in 1975 in Cooley High. And on his page or something, he showed that. And I thought that was so cool just being around that. And he was raised in Chicago yeah. and being around, and that was of course Cooley High, and yeah. just being in that. And he was also, I think he showed, was he in mahogany? I think Mahogany mm. with um, Lady Sings, uh, no, Mahogany with Diana Ross and uh, Billy well, D. Both Williams. Of them, yeah. I think, it, yeah. Yeah, Lady Sings yeah, the Blues was, was too, both of them. Okay. Yeah, the, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't do, we, we should be ashamed of ourselves, Kendall. We should. We did we not should. do either one of, we did we not should. do either one of those movies. And I We got to do, that. we got to do those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to do those because we did my favorite Claudine. Uh, we yeah. gotta do Lady Sings right in the Baltimore area, and it's about Billie Holiday, who's from Baltimore. 
Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mahogany, you gonna let my arm fall off? I mean, I fall off. <laughs> I, about, I, did, <laughs> I did a Black History. Um, I do like the Black History. Do your Black History homework, and I spotlighted um, Diana Ross and Motown. I talked about Barry Ross. Gordy doing that and Diana Ross in that. So we definitely, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. We need to just yeah, do yeah. We got it. We got to do them. That's definitely our classic. Do uh, two classics because we, we did do. it. Remember, we did like the seventies. Yeah, right. Because remember, we did the classic, um, some classic movies. But I don't know why that. How could that? We're yeah. we be ashamed of ourselves. Yeah, I don't know how we missed those. How we missed those two? Because those are definitely right. Because it's for too sure. Many movies will sure. never go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> like we said, they'll never go out of business. It's too many movies. Um, so I'm yeah, looking at this, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm looking down, guys. If you see me looking down, um, Townsend auditioned to be a part of Saturday Night Live, uh, 1980 and 1981, but w- was rejected in favor of Eddie Murphy. So they chose Eddie Murphy, yeah, over yeah, yeah. In and the rest is history over that. But isn't it beautiful that he also, even though that was the thing, he directed Raw for, for Eddie Murphy. They still, they work Come together. On. Yep. Come on. Yep. They still, so I Absolutely. love that. I love that. And yeah. then Townsend later yeah. appeared, and, of course, in small parts like the film The Soldier Story. And the Mighty Quinn with Denzel in '89. You remember that movie? Yeah. And let, let me ask you this. And see, there's there's some people to me that are better in front of the camera. There's some people that are better behind the camera. I'm I'm one of those that thinks that Robert Townsend is better behind mm-hmm. the camera. Mm-hmm. Keenan Ivory Wayans is better behind the camera. I, they do. I hate they, to, I hate to say. Ooh, I hate to say this, but I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just because they're not for, good in front of the camera. Let's be clear. It's right, not that right, not exactly. Good in front of yeah, because nobody but they have a certain eye. Like him. Yeah, yeah, they, they, but they have a certain eye that, yeah. that directors have, and we're talking about directors. They have a certain eye yeah. for, like we said, bringing a script to life and, and doing the different things that they do. That I don't believe that, that you know. They're more talented. Not saying like we said, they're more talented behind the camera than they're not. Not that yeah. they're not talented in front of the camera, yeah. but I think their eye for being a director is greater. That that skill set that they have, yeah, is is you know is, is is even more enhanced than than being in front of the camera and being a character in a movie. You know, yeah, I, I, I yeah. just really do. Yeah. But of course, because every time I don't care, and this could be every time I see Robert Townsend in front of the camera, I want to laugh. <laughs> he makes the fa- I don't know. I, I always his think facial expressions, even with a serious conversation, is like you want to laugh. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's some people are like that. Like some comedians are like that. They don't have to say a word. And, and you'll just bust out laugh. You'll bust out laughing. I and know. Just, um, Arnaz, J is one of those comedians that does that for me. He ain't got to do oh, nothing but stand there, and that dude is he is straight fool. Yeah, he's he is fool. straight fool. Yeah, he's <laughs> but he's but yeah, but but Robert Robert Townsend is like I said. He's I mean he's that gift. That's a gift to be to be yeah. you know to be able to be in front of the camera and to be able to have yeah. the be behind the camera and yeah. to be able to do what directors do like cuz not everybody can do that everybody yeah. that's a uh, that's a, an actor is not a director you know no. Denzel has no. had Denzel has has navigated both very well Man, Regina Antoine King Fisher, Regina who yeah Regina King that's my that's my girl right there that I, yeah. I love her as a as an actor and as a as a director she she's done a couple of directed a couple of movies and and i think she's one of those that has the yeah. eye of a yeah. of a director you know yeah. i mean she's been in the industry since what she was a teenager so she's been yeah. around a long time so she knows a lot um and and, and uh, but there's yeah. certain people like we said keenan ivory wayans is one too that um you know that 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 is in front of the camera, yeah. but but I think he he's more known for being behind the camera. I'm gonna tell you a funny story about the five heartbeats. I, I, I think I've told you before. I always kick myself. I always kick myself because uh, what? no, because when the five heartbeats came out, right? 
I was in college and I was working oh, at a movie you. theater. I worked at a movie theater down in Salisbury, Maryland. And didn't see, and didn't see and the damn I, movie. And didn't see the damn old movie. I could have saw it for free. Saw it for free. Man. Didn't watch it when it was in the movies. I was just like, how did I not watch this movie? It's I was so like, this is such a great movie. But you know what? In your defense, because you know you my brother, I got to take up for you. In your defense, people don't realize that the five heartbeats was going through when they were talking about black movies then i think it yeah. was Boy, boys and hood one of them they had like shooting yeah. in the movie, and they pulled back on some of the distribution yeah. with it and also Correct. robert townsend was saying the trailer did not depict what the movie was movie. about so mm. a lot of people mm. didn't see it in the movie it movie theater it became successful when it started going to um they VHS and it started yeah, going to right, no, right. and then now it's in DVD. A, mm -hmm, yeah. Took, yeah. And DVD and it took a place, you know, it took it a different precedence. But um Robert Townsend, I think I maybe spoken about this on this podcast before when we did, because if you check, if you're just tuning in for the first time, we covered uh the five heartbeats. We talked about that. So check that out on the more than just a movie playlist right here on YouTube. And you'll see us. And I don't like to say review because we have conversations about Correct. the movie. So it's in a, in a unique way, it's more than a review. It's like yep, bringing light to it. Where were we at this time? And I think I spoke about this then, but, um, Robert Townsend did a behind the scenes a few years ago, probably in 2018, somewhere around then. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in the movie theater and it was only in selected movie theaters. And it was mm -hmm. a whole documentary behind the making of Five Heartbeats, how it came to be came and the together. struggle that they had to do that. And I was I bought I bought my ticket and now I have seen it since on I don't know what channels, but it's on some apps. So if you haven't seen that, you got it's amazing. Yeah. You got to see it. And if you love the five heartbeats, you're going to appreciate it that much more. And even the way that he did that in his directing, it was amazing. They had him sitting in the movie theater. They had all the people that were in it. They had the um, audition tapes. They had Keenan, how he was taught. He was there with him writing it and how he got living, um, living color and he couldn't go with it. And just who they thought that they would use because Whitney Houston, they wanted Whitney Houston for baby doll. And really? she was, yeah. And she, at the last minute she declined, but that's who they wanted. And Troy, they saw her before and was like, hmm. And She's look, perfect. She was, and she was perfect for it. Yeah. Listen, but Troy was baby doll in the five heartbeats. And later she wrote BAPS and Robert mm -hmm. Townsend directed that. So cool. And she, I just thought about that, that. And that shows you just how, and, 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 and then this is so true, the six degrees of separation that we're yeah. all separated only by 60 yeah. minutes. But that just shows you what can happen when you develop yeah. relationships in any industry. You know, when you develop yeah. those or relationships. Those relationships. Easy to work with. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and, and, and we've talked about this before because we talked about Spike Lee. Spike uses a lot, he used a lot of the same people. Mm -hmm. Robert Townsend mm -hmm. used a lot of the same yeah. people. One, because yeah. you know their work. Yeah. <laughs> you know their work. And and you yeah. and you, so you know what you're going to be getting, and yeah. and you and you understand how they will, will be able to pull off the different yeah. roles or the different movies yeah. that that um that they will be able to do. So yeah, so that's that that yeah that that, that just goes to show you, you know, as um as Mr. Avon said, relationships are resources. So <laughs> man, 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 what are you talking about? And think about it: if you're easy to work with, right, or if mm -hmm. it flows. Um, nicely, or they just love your work, or you build a rapport. That's why networking is your net worth. It really mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. how you see Spike Lee uses the same people over and over again. Robert Townsend, right. Tyler Perry, you know, people sent, tend to use and people are loyal, especially if you like, say, for instance, all the people who did um, 
Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle. He financed, uh, mm -hmm. he was pulling money un from under the match. He was pulling money yep. from everywhere to do that. Everywhere. And it's not a yep. silly, really a smart movie. And it's based off of what he saw when he was trying to audition, when they were like, I need mm -hmm. you to act black. I need you to act more black. And he was showing the ills of the of <laughs> Hollywood and that whole Hollywood shuffle, if you will, pun intended. And he made a satire in the most brilliant way. Now, if you watch it and just from one eye, you might be like, this is silly. But if you really look at it and you've seen the mm -hmm. movie and not just heard about it or seen the clip, it's brilliant right. on yep. a shoestring budget. Right. And, and why is it real, real quick? Why is it, why is it that? And maybe maybe I just don't know because I ain't into them that much. Why is it that the black movie directors seem to have um, a, a big issue of having to having a hard time raising the money financing. or getting money yep. to get green yep. yeah, financing and green lit. Because even even Spike yep. having the name that he had still had to go around to his to his well off friends to finish my, Malcolm X. He he yeah. he talked about it. Yeah. He had to go to Oprah. He had to go to uh, Michael yeah. Jordan. He had to go to Bill Cosby. Yeah. He had to go to Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was digging in his Rolodex mm -hmm. deep to yeah. finish to finish but his think movie. About and it's, that. But think about that. They ain't going in their wallet if he wasn't tried and true. They knew he was going to do that justice. Yeah. And they were able to do that. But I totally agree with yeah. you. You don't hear about white filmmakers or directors having to scrimp right. and scrunch and find money under the mattress. Right. You don't hear about those stories. Yeah. If it happens. Yeah. I said it. And if if they if they if if it happens, I we don't hear about it. Like we hear about, you know, the, the black uh directors, the black black producers trying to put together their money in order to be able to get a project done. And that what that's why I say that's the importance of a of a Tyler Perry studio. Him having a studio because he gives mm -hmm. the green light. Mm -hmm. He gives the green light. He's the one mm -hmm. that says, All right, we're gonna give you this budget. You know, mm -hmm. because I know that this movie is going to, you know, is going to come out on the other side of it. Re the return mm -hmm. that we're going to get is going to be is going to be great because I like yeah. what this movie represents. I like what it what it does uh, to me. Oprah Winfrey could do the right. same thing. I don't I don't know if her studio is on the same as the Tyler Perry studio because I don't know how yeah. hers how hers works. But and, and even yeah. that, that to me, that's how you that's how you compete. With a yeah. MGM, with a with a Sony and, and all of them. You say, look, yeah. the black directors, y'all come here. You bring us these good stories. Yeah. We we want yeah. I want to look even if y'all don't, even if it is bad, I still want to see yeah. it so that I can decide whether yeah. or not it's good or bad. And we're gonna make no, sure that you get the well money true. you need. You know, make sure you get the money you need in order to be able to, you know, in order to be able to bring this vision, you know, this this movie vision to reality, man. It's just, right. to me, we're in 2024, we shouldn't be in that position where, where we have black yeah. directors are struggling to get projects yeah. done. I and agree. And green lit. Because think yeah. about, and I totally agree, and that's a good point, Leroy, but think about the pro the pro what they produce when yeah. they do get the money greenlit when they do get the project yeah. think about the amazing things that we would have missed and now they have yep. crowdfunding and different things like that to be able to do that but even matthew cherry who is a director he's a former football player and he is a director as well as a writer and mm -hmm. he produced um hair love that cartoon mm. about the black mother and the father and she had cancer and now it's gone off and a spinoff, but he did a movie, the one with um, Christian keys. I can't think of the name of the movie right now, but I gave mm. money to that and he was trying to do that. And now he's huge. He done directed um, blackish. And I mean, so many things, but this was when I did this, this was, I was still in my thirties. And he was trying so hard to go get into this business and doing that. And he had to do crowdfunding before it was crowd 
crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking at him and he's taken off. But you're absolutely right. They, they start struggling where someone else can vouch for someone else. And we have to be able to do that for for each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, I would like to see more, you know, yeah, I, I would like to see more of, of, of us. And this is in all industries, but, but when you talk about the entertainment industry, seeing us being more supportive of the directors and getting their projects. Cause I've said it, there, there are a number of books, Kendall, that need to be made into movies, black, black yeah. books. Yeah, that need and to be made gonna... into into movies, and, and these directors. Hopefully, you know somebody is listening to this. Uh, I mean, um, and and say, hey, you know what? Um, Omar Tyree's books. Um, they're already doing Carl Weber's books. Um, Travis Hunter, who was another one. That's that's my that's my boy right there. That brother has some phenomenal books that yeah. need to be made into movies. Um, yeah. and it just. You know, people. We gotta, there's so much out here that could be done, and putting the the money behind, you know, these projects to get them done. And 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 the truth be told, I think we as black people would support them. You know I what I mean? Because we re we come from an era. In well, you and I still read, and there's a lot of people that that still read mm -hmm. actual books, right? Audio, whatever. Yeah. You're reading it. You're listening. You're still into books and not all the time TV or shows, right? And you, right, we and right. you and I, I even have a um, a playlist on here called Book It, where I talk about book I, books. I do book okay. reviews and interview authors and different things like that. So I'm all for a book. And of course, I'm a writer. You're a writer. Um, and when we're reading, especially a novel or so, of such, it's like you're envisioning a movie anyway. Yeah. You're envisioning, yep. and that's what a yep. good book will do. So a yep. lot of the movies that were, the, a lot of the books that we're reading, we could already see a movie in our head before mm -hmm. we actually see it. We're like, okay, they probably look like this the way that they described it. Just like when we watch Disappearing Acts from... Um, Terry McMillan, or yep. when we see Winston, you know, as you know, Tay Diggs as how Stella when how Stella got her groove back, or when we see Mister from Color Purple, or whatever book it is, they come to life, and it's interesting that some books. I wonder if it's the books that get optioned into movies. Is it because of the selling of the books and how many units they sold, or is it because they have the right people in place to be able to make things like that happen? Yeah, I think it's probably what a combination of both. I think it's a combination yeah. of both. I think they want very yeah. popular books that that have the right, you know, makeup and and they could have the right mixture of of um, bringing an audience to you know to a theater to be able to see it. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a, a, a mixture of both um, yeah. in, in order to be able to do that. So yeah, so hopefully you know uh, Robert Townsend is working on some some projects because I think he could still do some you know do some great projects. There are plenty. And once a writer, you once a writer and director, you're always a writer and director. I think you yeah. can. That's something that lasts the, the 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 staying time. You can do that for decades and decades yeah. and decades. You, you know, uh, you know the actors. You kind of have a short lifespan as a, as an mm -hmm. actor or actress, if you will. But but directors directing, you can you can all to me you can always do that because you can find the right script and and get it out there. And like I said, in this twenty in this twenty first century, yeah, you, you don't have you don't need a big studio. You got folks that are using iPhones, Kendall. They doing movies with iPhones. Making a whole movie. Making a whole movie. You ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying. Remember there was a Super Bowl a couple of years ago? Remember the Super Bowl a couple of years ago? They had that featured. Like it was some movies and some films. And they were saying all, because they were promoting iPhones. And it was like all created by iPhone. I remember that. And I was like, now what now? Look, this phone I got right here. Like what you talking about? I can do yep. that. But let's talk about some of the other classics. That well, you got to go to direct. Yeah. Um, Baps. Jackie's yep. back. That was, <laughs> do you remember <laughs> Jackie's back? That was such a good movie. Yeah, I do. I did. I didn't, I didn't see it, but, but Jennifer Lewis it? is just, yeah. Wait, Jennifer, wait, let's pause. No, 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 I didn't. 
your homework before we meet again next Thursday. You got to watch Jackie's back and tell me what you think. Have you guys listening okay, or okay. watching the playback or live? Have you seen Jackie's back? I'll put that when, on my. I'm gonna put that on my list this weekend. When Jennifer Lewis is asking her daughter to get her a drink, her daughter's name is. Um, <laughs> Entendra, right? So she looks at her daughter. She's like, give me a double, Entendra. <laughs> and if Jennifer you know Lewis what a double is, Entendra is, she is hilarious. On the word, and you know how she's how she speaks. And um, Robert Townsend directed that. He just is foolish in the most beautiful way because it is hilarious. Yeah, she really is. It's hilarious. Yeah, she's hilarious. You, you got to see Jackie's back. Um, I'm not even going to tell you anything else about it. You got to see it. But is that on Netflix? You know, if that's on Netflix. I don't know. It's. I think it's on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie oh, okay. on YouTube. I watched YouTube. It again, okay. Like a couple of years ago, okay. and it was. I'll pull I saw it. I'll pull it. Thing on YouTube. Um, okay. I'll pull it. I'll pull it. He directed Little Richards, where the Little Richards movie yeah. where he had Leon in that. You know, that's his boy. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2000, Holiday Heart. Um, which is a great movie. That's a classic for many. Director of that. Carmen, hip hop opera, hopra, mm -hmm. hopra. Remember with Beyonce, he directed that. Living for Love, the Natalie Cole story. That was a good one. He directed that in 2001. Um, 10,000 Black Men Named George. He directed that in 2002. Um, I can go on and on. Um, Scooby Doo Music of the Vampire in 2012. Uh, he was a, act, actually, he was the voice of that. But Playing for Love, that was that movie in 2015. In 2018, as I was talking about the making of the Five Heartbeats, he directed that. He directed uh, episodes and he starred in Black Lightning, which was an amazing show. Did you ever get into that? No. Uh -uh. I remember Black it, though, but I never, I, never got, I, never got, I never got it. Yeah, he directed that. And he directed uh, American Soul. Do you remember that? The the um, Don Cornelius Soul yeah, Train? Yeah, yeah. China. He directed that. I don't know oh, if wow. he directed no, I, all the episodes, but he directed it. Right, well, he did a particular episode. Yeah, I, that was my show, though. That was a great show. I don't know what I happened to it. Maybe it yeah, I did too. I, I thought they had more that they could tell with that story with Don Cornelius, but yeah. that was a great that was that was a that was a good series. That was a good series. I really liked that series. I really liked it. Yes. Yes. And also, and as we wind down um the Wonder Years in 2021, and so on and so on and so on. Robert Townsend is a, a treasure when it comes to Black yeah. cinema, as we talk about the for black real, experience, the black culture, what we consider a yeah. classic or classic individuals in this game are where you can pull up their credentials, where you can recite lines, where you can tell you, you tell somebody where you were when you saw this, or you remember this about this person. And I had the pleasure and honor of interviewing for Sheen Magazine. Um, I reached out to, to Sky, had the pleasure of interviewing her, Sky Townsend, which is his daughter. And mm. I didn't want to talk about Robert Townsend because I wanted the spotlight what? to really be on her. But because mm -hmm. of how brilliant comedically she is and how in tune with what she's doing, I had to bring up Robert Townsend. I'm like, I'm <laughs> sure more was caught than taught. I'm sure that you learned so much from your dad. And she said she was being prepared by her dad, Robert Townsend, the whole time and not knowing. She said driving mm -hmm. to school on the way to school, she used to come up with different characters. He'd be like, now do this. And she would come up with these different characters who now, fast oh, wow. forward, mm -hmm. she was on a Black Lady sketch show on HBO and was doing all of these different characters. She was in there spending time oh, wow. with her dad okay. and he was cultivating these characters, she would have all these characters and she would perform not knowing it was performing, but to him in the car. That was, that's great. That is great. That's right. Great. You, you, I'm a, I'm a, I want to put a bug in your ear and I don't know if you can make this happen or not with your, with your shine, 
um, uh, podcast and he's interviewed. Mm-hmm. But you should you should try and interview um, Clarence Avant's daughter. You know she has a book out. Oh yes. Oh, I that's think it good. would be because I'm 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 gonna try and get her on my I'm gonna try to get her to be a part of the author showcase. No. But but I I really think that that would be yeah. phenomenal. A phenomenal that interview for you to be able to that sit and talk be. with her with shot with Sean. So, oh, so if wow. you can put that put that in in whoever's ear needs to be in and and make that magic happen, I think that would that would be phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. You know what? That would be super, super, super. I would honored because she was on Oprah's show, and I was. I don't know if you yeah. saw her being interviewed. That was so yeah, powerful. I saw it. That was so yeah. powerful, yeah. Nicole Avon. Yeah. Um. All right, Leroy, tell the people what should we should do as we end this. Because I'm about at well, 7 they, o'clock, they, I'm about to see my people because I didn't get a chance to see New Edition. And their Vegas residency has started yesterday. So I'm going live hmm. with my people who did in Vegas. Oh, so cool. still stick around on my YouTube channel. They are live in Vegas right now. And we're going to talk about the first day of the New Edition um, residency in Las Vegas. This is the first so, big thing so, that I missed with them. So my heart is it, broken. So she's going to share is, it is, is Usher still in, in residency out there too? No, he finished. I saw Usher oh, okay. residency yesterday. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah, I mean, y'all definitely... Last year. Got you. You definitely want to make sure you subscribe. Where, wherever it is, down there, over there, wherever it is, <laughs> make sure you subscribe. Yes. Uh, we need you to subscribe. We need you yeah. to like, share, comment. Um, we want to know what y'all think about the, the directors that we've done so far um, for this new yeah. season. And if there's a director that you all want to hear about that y'all yes. think that, that we should talk about, um, hit us up yes. in the comment section. Let us know what y'all, what y'all, um, who y'all want to hear about. Um, because it's some it's some great directors that are out there yeah. that we have yeah. no idea who they are yeah. black directors and we have no idea who they we don't talk about them enough. So we wanna we wanna we wanna show some love to the to the directors just like just like in the band you wanna get the drummer some we're trying to give the direct the directors some oh, <laughs> this nice. this thing <laughs> to the drummer some yeah, you know <laughs> <laughs> so we're we trying to get a direct when stuff. I saw New Edition um, last year um, they were giving the drummer some they was like Bobby yeah. was like get a drummer some Ronnie was like get a drummer some they was like yes <laughs> but everybody I thank you so much for tuning in and continuously supporting MT Jams more than just a movie where we break down classic black film TV and the black experience when it comes to the culture. I wouldn't want to do this with anybody else other than my brother, Dr. Lee Roy McKenzie Jr. I love you, man. We got to think about, will it be Regina King? Will it be, hmm, we got to think about it. Maybe we can do two for one. Yeah. Maybe we can do two directors in one next week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll, we'll think about, because we got a, we got a lot of choices that we can do. Um, as far as as far as um, directors that I'm thinking about, I mean, we got a whole yeah. we had a whole list of them. I think we can we can we can fill the whole season with directors. That's how many we yeah, that's let's how many we it. have, and we need to shout out. So okay, let's so, do cool. it. All right, I love you. I love you, Leroy. All right, love you, everyone. Thank love you so you much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this out. If you love Robert Townsend or his movies and TV shows, or uh, shout him out to support, right, shout them out, or just to support us, supporting us. Definitely share this on your social media pages, as well as texting and email and doing all of that stuff. But get the word out. All right, y'all. This is more than just a movie. I am Kendall Anise. Who are you? Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr., the impact builder. <laughs> All See right, y'all, y'all next week. Be, be well. Keep on watching movies. And Leroy got to watch Jackie's back. <laughs> yeah.